In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve um, the currents and voltages in a series circuit. Okay, What you see here, this is a cell. This is a voltage source. It's providing 24 volts of pressure. That's an ammeter. So that's like a flow meter. The current is going to flow through that ammeter. That's a resistor, a 1 ohm resistor, a 2 ohm resistor, a 5 ohm resistor. Notice that the current flows through three different ammeters, A1, A2, and A3. Okay. And then these things are pressure gauges. These are voltmeters, and they are measuring the pressure change from one side to the other side, from one side to the other side. Current can't flow through a voltmeter. This has essentially infinite resistance. Um, real voltmeters do have some kind of a, you know, not infinite resistance, but close to. Okay, so this measures the pressure that changes because of this constriction in the pipe, and this measures the pressure of that one, and this one, that one. Okay, so. The key concept here is that a series circuit has many voltages, but it has only one current. Okay, so all of these ammeters here are going to have the same current, and that's going to be the current that goes this way, right? That's the same current here. And once we figure out that one current, it'll be the same for all of these ammeters. And the reason for that is the charge is conserved, and so that there, there are no other branches. They can't go through the, the voltmeters, and so there are no other places for the current to go. So that's how you know it's a series circuit, is that all the current goes through the first resistor, then the second, and then the, the third in a series like that. And there are no other branches for it to take. Okay. Now to solve these is really simple. The first thing you do is you find the total resistance. Okay. In this case, it's uh, uh, step one, you know. Uh, here we'll do it. Okay, so step one, the total resistance is uh, one ohm plus two ohms plus 5 ohms, yeah? So 1 plus 2 plus 5 is 8 ohms, okay? The next thing to do, the second thing to do, okay, is to find the one current, okay? And the one current is easy, right? Now we've got 24 volts divided by 8 ohms. I'm using Ohm's law. I'm using the fact that I equals V divided by R, okay? So 24 divided by 8 is 3.0 amps. And now we know that this, this meter here reads 3.0 amps, right? This meter here is going to read 3.0 amps. It's the same current. It, it's not being used up by these, these resistors. Um, the pressure is changing, but the, the current stays the same. We're not getting more or, or fewer uh, electrons, right? This one's also going to read 3.0 amps. They all read 3 amps, okay? And then the final thing is to, to use V equals IR to find the voltages, right? So Ohm's law is, uh, what is it, R is V divided by I, right? It's also I is V divided by R, right? And it's also V is IR, okay? So for this guy right here, the voltage drop, the voltage change from this probe to this probe is just going to be I times R. So V is IR. I already said that. <laughs> Ah, okay, so um, here we go. We got 3 amps times 1 ohm, so that's 3 volts. I guess 3.0 volts, right? And then this guy is uh, IR as well, right? So it's 3 amps times uh, 2 ohms, right? So that's 6.0 volts, right? And then this guy here is 3 amps times 5 ohms. So there's a bigger voltage drop across a bigger resistor. That makes sense. Bigger constrictions in a pipe cause a bigger change in pressure. 3 times 5 is 15. Okay, and then just notice this, right? Uh, 3 plus 6 is 9 plus 15 is 24 volts, right? So if you look, if you look at all the voltage drops in a circuit, they will equal the total voltage rise, the pressure uh, applied to the circuit, okay? So that's how you do it, right? Find the total resistance, just add them up, find the one current, that's just going to be V divided by R, right? And then use V equals IR to pick off the voltages, okay? Uh, one last thing here, and there's a useful analogy that we can do. Imagine these guys in a series like that. What, what students don't understand is you know, how can this resistance that the current has not yet encountered, how can it affect the current before that, right? It hasn't even encountered that resistance, but how can it affect the current in, in a spot before the circuit. Think of current as like a bunch of ping pong balls being shoved down a tube, okay? 
Notice that these ping pong balls can't get through if these guys are encountering a resistance. So if I grab the tube here and squeeze it so that the ping pong balls have a hard time getting through, it's going to slow down the ping pong balls all along the pipe since there's one current. Right? And that's why any change of resistance anywhere in this whole long pipe is going to change the throughput. Okay? Electrons are not compressible. Okay? Um, and then, you know, another, this is also very useful, right? If, if we start to push an electron in here, one electron comes out that side. So charge is conserved. And the instant, pretty much instantaneously when I press this, it, it is the speed of light, right? When I press this in here, we don't have to wait for that electron to get out here to know that the current's flowing. It all flows more or less at once. Okay, there is the speed of light propagation delay. But anyway, that's it. You should be able to um, solve series circuits now or have a fighting chance.